Good afternoon everybody, Alex StarCraft here bringing you guys a StarCraft 2 commentary between two of the best Protoss players and everyone's fan favorites. We have in the top right hand corner, Mr. Special Tactics. I use the carrier all the time against Zerg. Please don't remove it, Blizzard. White Raw as the red Protoss and Grubby the blue Protoss in the bottom left hand corner. Grubby is just kind of a fan favorite in StarCraft 2 so far. He's just gotten, I would say, bigger recently and he's very good for certain. But he's just a wonderful guy. He does a very good job casting when he does do it. And he was a tippy tip tip top Warcraft 3 player. And so I think everyone who did follow that scene, I did not, little disclaimer there. Everyone who did follow that scene does most certainly love him. Now this is my first commentary in quite a bit. Many of you guys have noticed that. My 29 subscribers, I know at least one of those or two of those subscriptions are indeed the same person on two different accounts, but that's fine. It makes me feel good about myself. And so this game is going to be my first one in a while, but I figured if I was going to do a cast, I do want to do a one where it is going to be two good players in a matchup I don't know too well. No more ZVP, nothing like that. So I chose a PVP, a mirror matchup of two, a race I don't know quite as well as my main race but you know i'm learning and i want to learn want to cast this starcraft and who doesn't love seeing white raw and grubby play each other as uh as we saw at the beginning there both of them very mannered people that pauses the game for a second but you see both of them very nice with the gg glhf white raw throwing in the smiley face and they are just very nice players white raw definitely up there with chef in terms of being mannered some people like to say that they are going that um someday they might have a manner off and try and out manner each other other, but then it would never end because neither one would let the other one win because they're too mannered and now very soon we'll start to see exactly what openings the players will be going for we have both players build orders exactly the same Almost down to the second right here. The probe's off by a tiny bit. There's a slightly uh, quicker second assimilator there for Grubby. And by slightly quicker, I mean White Rise actually not getting one. And we see both players doing a very good job being active with the probe in their opponent's base. There's that second gas from White Raw. So he's going to have a few more minerals. But as I said, both players actually being very active here in these bases. They know exactly what the other players are doing. White Rod trying to uh, glitch that mineral patch a little bit just makes it so other probes can't mine there if he's a annoying it now he's going to take down this pylon by the with the probe all by itself both players starting on the warp gate starting and that stalker production so it looks like both of them definitely going to be going for that opening stalker which i think you do in almost all uh all games of pvp no matter what kind of build you want to do just because without it getting map control is absolutely impossible because the stalker is the fastest protoss unit more or less except maybe uh, I think charge lots are pretty fast. Of course, Colossi, Phoenix. Colossi can walk over cliffs, of course. But, you know, Stalkers are very fast. That is my point. And so those definitely give you some map control. And it looks like White Rot is actually going to be opting to go for a robotics facility. Now, from what I have understand, watching the Protoss vs. Protoss games recently, Robotech is what most all games come down to in the end. Simply because you can go for... However insane stalker upgrades you want to go for, but regardless, immortals are still just kind of going to eventually take them out. You can go for archons, which can of course be great for doing things like mitigating some of that immortal damage and as well um, breaking down force fields because of course they are counted as massive, but when your, when your opponent starts to get colossi you have to start getting colossi and so that's really just what this uh what these long pvps come down to they come down to insane colossi versus colossi battles and we do have the slightly faster expansion coming down here from grubby we can see he is actually up a worker but if we take a look at his tech he is still only on two gateways he's actually just chrono boosting out well not chrono boosting out he's chrono boosting warp gate and very good timing on it look at that the stalker's finishing right when warp gate finishes so he can immediately get that and it looks like he is going to be throwing down that robo too so it looks like for these players, it was just a matter of preference between White Raw wanting to get the Robo first, maybe be a little bit safer, get that slightly faster Observer, which as we see is heading across the map. 
right now and it is going to be getting a good look now i don't want to center on the rocks it's going to be getting a good look but at the same time grubby taking advantage of the slightly higher stalking count stalker count moving out it is going to see the timing on white Rod's expansion it looks like he was going to try and pick off that pro but white Rod is going to be boldly running in he does not have as many stalkers but he does have two sentries here and is he going to do anything he is going to throw down two force fields which were very good they stopped the stalkers from getting up there nearly as easily but now two stalkers versus two sentries not going to go too well for the sentries but they're there is an immortal out for white raw now and grubby being very persistent trying to pick off that probe denied the expansion of white raw for a little longer but he is going to be throwing that down momentarily but grubby's is actually already up so if we take a look at the income tab grubby does only have a one worker advantage but he can produce workers faster now and we will see his uh mineral income is going to jump up a little bit simply because having this second base automatically means you have uh, slightly more efficiency just in terms of your saturation and so we do see grubby actually going straight for that colossi as i said he's getting them out very quickly because he does anticipate that fact that the matchup is eventually going to end up on colossus versus colossus tech essentially and so for now if he gets that up quickly enough it's not going to matter that uh white raw has those faster immortals but Grubby does have one of his own now, and look at that white rot in the production tab. A mere 30-ish seconds after Grubby throws down his robotics robotics bay. I always get those confused. White Roth throwing down one of his own, and he is going to commence that Colossus production very soon. And his observer is going to be heading across the map now. So see, what have the players seen of each other? Currently, Grubby sees almost nothing, but if we take a look, White Roth sees... Uh, no, wait, that is... Grubby's vision. White Raw does not see anything as of right now. He does know that the bay is on the way. He would have clicked on that when he went over it, so he knows what that is. So he's going to be seeing if he can get a little damage done with these immortals, but Grubby does see it coming, and it looks like he might actually know it's there. He could maybe pick that off if these observers get a little closer together, but it doesn't look like they're going to. Will they spot each other? Yeah, they can see each other for just a second, but it looks like White Raw did spot it. He is going to try and pick it off. Is he going to be able to get it? No, because an observer is not faster than an observer unfortunately and here is the first colossus of the game of being put to good use of breaking down those rocks so he can grab that third and grubby doing a very good job just making sure he's keeping ahead on the economy you can see he does have a five more workers which can be a significant difference in this uh mirror matchup and he is still producing them two at a time whereas white raw is actually cut production of probes for now i'm not exactly sure if there is a reason for that he might just want a slightly higher colossus count when he eventually does push out he did just get his was it first yes he did just get his first colossus whereas the second is almost out for grubby so I'm not sure if it was entirely intentional for him to quit that, but this observer is going to be warded off by the stalker. White Rod does see that observer. Very good game sense there, knowing that there is a chance of that. And here we go. Grubby pushing out across the map with two Colossi to White Rod's one. However, when the base is reached, there is a good chance that White Rod will indeed have one. But Grubby, very cute right here. He knows that the Zonaka Tower might be controlled by his opponent. So he pushes out with these units towards the tower and then skirts the Colossi over the cliff taking advantage of that so the tower is never going to see those coming white raw we see breaking down those rocks for the third just now and grubby has actually not grabbed that third yet despite having broken down those rocks we can see he's still up by workers on eight now so that is fairly significant and there goes that third right there and so white raw actually not doing too great so far it seems like he might have just fallen behind a little bit but let's take a look at the units tab we see he does have less probes same number of obs he has one less zealot he does have an extra immortal but he's down a colossi and he's down in stalkers up by a sentry but of course at this point it doesn't make a huge difference with colossi in play the sentries or not sentries the zealots of course can be controlled by force fields very well but colossi can break them down if they really want to and of course their range of nine uh nine once he has thermal lance i believe it is or is that wait what doesn't he have it is nine am i crazy yes it is nine okay it is nine extended thermal lance tt tt t, t, t smiley face i'm not sure exactly what that was about right there maybe a little bit of lag i guess one of them maybe paused it really quickly of course we have no idea what happens there we can't actually see it but that would be boring if players did pause for maybe 30 seconds and we just had to wait for the replay to continue as we sat 
but we do see both players working on a third but once again grubby's finishing a good bit before white Ross is done white Ross is only about halfway there and once again grubby he does scout it out he knows the exact timing on this and white rod knows nothing of the expansion from grubby so he's not exactly going to be sure what's going on and is he going to pick off the observer yes he is and that is a big win for white Ra, white Ra, we can see that grubby has map vision of essentially zero right now but he does have two very well placed proxy pylons that will let him run right up into his opponent's expansion uh his natural expansion as well as third scout timing and maybe even kill a probe or two if something like that were to occur but white Ra, with that very good uh mini map awareness is going to see that pick it off and grubby is still going to know the exact timing on his expansion though but we have white Ra actually throwing down a stargate very interesting way in the back of his base where he he knows chances are it will not be scouted and that is white raw for you he is indeed mr special tactics he might be doing something insane looks like chances are it might just be void rays maybe even phoenix i'm not sure exactly what they would lift up they could attack colossi but they are not very good against them simply because colossi are armored phoenix do not do very well versus armored units but you're gonna have to see what white raw is going to be going for there and we have a fleet beacon on the way so that means we are going to be seeing a mothership or really heavily upgraded other air units but he's not getting the upgrades right now or we are going to be seeing carriers and of course carriers and mothership there is nothing better than the phrase special tactics to describe exactly what doing that is and as i said white rot is the guy who loves to use carriers versus zerg he loves to use them versus protoss as well apparently and looks like grubby is actually gonna be running in here picking off a stalker he's gonna be doing some damage but he still he has no idea about that stargate chances are he is not going to know about that stargate simply because of its positioning it is way in the back the fleet beacon is finished so what are we going to see on the way sorry about that lag i don't know why that is and there is the mothership commencing over here at the natural and so there is a small chance that grubby could scout that coming but i do not believe he has an observer on the field right now if we take a look no he does not have an observer so if white raw can get out this mothership particularly with no okay I, I don't know why i said there's not an observer because there clearly is an observer but i do not know where it is at the moment let's see is it in the base does he have vision no he does not it seems like he is just going to be keeping it with his army yes indeed there it is but with only the one observer it particularly if white raw can pick that off he can be in very good shape and imagine a vortex going down on that would just be insane it would give white raw a very uh very good position simply because on the colossi count they are almost even white rod is down by two but it's all these other ground units that can really make such a big difference the mothership is about halfway done and charge on the way as well but grubby kind of taking a bit of an aggressive uh aggressive posture right here he does have that center control still breaking down these rocks to open another avenue for attack if he so chooses as well as allowing him access to that expansion and if white Ra ever wants to grab this those rocks will already be down so that'll allow free access for all ground units and grubby as i was saying being a little aggressive this expansion it does take it towards his opponent as opposed to maybe taking this slightly safer one around down here further away from his opponent like uh like we see white rod doing we see he's choosing to expand not directly at his opponent so grubby has full control of the center here he's about three supply from being maxed but at the same time white raw is eight supply from being maxed one more warp in and he will have maximum supply and he does have that mothership which can be absolutely insane in pvp so i here i do not play it very frequently i am sorry but i cannot wait for this engagement to happen what is white rock going to do with this now the vortex takes 100 energy he's currently sitting at 73 he does have very good saturation all over here so the longer he waits it cannot hurt him that much both players on fairly equal economy we see white raw actually a little ahead and i'm not sure what he is floating this over here for maybe do a little scouting but it's going to be seen by grubby he does see that and so he's like oh gosh we see him instantly pull back take a slightly defensive posture just because he knows a single vortex on that could be deadly for him he does have this expansion up now so he does not have the option to cancel it but white raw has no idea that that expansion is there he is under attack up there but here comes the engagement they're posturing for position right now back and forth of course engaging right here grubby does have a bit of an advantage but it looks like white raw is going to be running in with all those colossi over here they're very bunched up all these units over here taking a lot of damage as well grubby doing a nice job splitting his colossi the zealot simply evaporating but white rock gets a 
big big vortex off right there sucks in a lot of units which gives him that temporary advantage that he might need in order to do enough damage to come out ahead in this fight but those units are going to pop out any second now on top of white ross colossi there they come but it looks like white ross actually had a good number of units in there as well but did that actually benefit him we see he is up 138 to 40 supply and by 40 i mean 90 not sure why i said that but it looks like white ross is going to pull ahead that um the vortex making a difference because it's just kind of a forced segmentation and he actually warped in dark templar in grubby's base at the same time that is why the supply differential is so huge i did not actually notice that happening i'm sorry about that i didn't even see he had a dark shrine but if we take a look at the workers killed cap white raw killed 31 probes in this game he probably killed about 25 right there take a look at these three kills five kills five kills five kills two kills that is a lot of worker kills and now we can see exactly why grubby is so far behind he's behind by 30 on workers alone and that leaves him about 20 behind on workers or on army supply even after that big warp and of course he has archons but really White Rye has a mothership. We see Grubby desperately trying to get out one of his own, but there is still about 90 seconds remaining on that, even with Chrono Boost, that he can't get that out within a minute of now. Looks like he is going to be picking that off of White Rod, just fearlessly running in. The Archon segmented from the rest of the army. That is a little sloppy from Grubby. Looks like the Zealots are running in, and they're going to do a lot of damage, but it doesn't make that huge of a difference, particularly because some of the units cannot be seen. The Zealots of White Rod running in themselves, doing a very good job kiting with this. We can see the multitasking of this player is really being displayed right here. But White Raw actually just has the mothership just kind of sitting, and even though it doesn't do that much damage, Grubby does not have much that can shoot up. Looks like White Raw is going to be losing his army here, but we see the mothership is simply floating and doing whatever damage it chooses. There is a High Templar that does do the feedback on it, but Grubby does start to attack with those stalkers finally. He is just going to be going straight for that Colossi, but I'm not sure if he will be able to catch it. But and there is the mothership of Grubby right there. So White Rot is going to see that that did come out. And so now I don't really know who is actually ahead. But if we look at the supply, it is very clear that it is White Rot. And simply because that third base of his is dead. The fourth base of his is dead. And White Rot is still running on all the bases that he wants. He does still have a mining natural getting close to mined out. But it is fully mining. We have carriers on the field. We have a fully mining third and a fully mining fourth. Grubby at this point is just going to be forced to push across the map. We see his two observers there to make sure that the mother is not going to catch him too off guard. White Rod at the same time moving out across with Carrier, Colossus, Archon, Zealot. This is a dangerous force. Of course, the ground units with the 3 2, the air units with no upgrades, but I'm not sure if it makes a big difference. Grubby does not have much that can really shoot up. He does not have ideal positioning right here. The mothership has arrived, but is it going to be enough? It looks like no. The observer of White Rot is going to be doing enough spotting. Grubby getting a nice vortex off, but there goes the mothership. The Colossi are going to go down, and there's the GG from Grubby. So that was kind of insane, and that is why I said I was excited to watch that game. Nine kills right there. I'm actually going to rewind really quickly. And just take a look at exactly, okay, I didn't mean the beginning, but just take a look at exactly what happened here. And okay, so here is the engagement coming, and all of a sudden, Dark Templar ran in. That is eight Dark Templar. Let's see what they do, and watch how quickly that line is actually devastated. White Rod doing a very good job actually controlling this. Grubby runs the probes, but it doesn't really matter. He's focused on this over here, and so so many of those workers going down. It was about 20 a second ago. Now it's down to five, so that was kind of insane. That is why I love watching people like White Rod play, and this is a best of three, so there is going to be more coming very soon. I'll get those up to you guys as soon as possible. I am very busy, but I want to keep casting, so I'll get those up soon. Hope you enjoyed. Have a wonderful afternoon.